Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Swigert, Director of Product here at Atlin. Excited to go through some of our latest updates. Again, we're starting with context among our three main theme areas to be followed by exploration and assistant. So let's get started. I'll hop right in to uh, Atlin itself. If you're familiar with our product, this will be old hat to you. If you haven't spent much time in it, basically what you're seeing here is our main search page, asset discovery. You're seeing all the different connections that we have in Atlin. And these are just a small sample. Uh, this might be what your data state looks like, or might be a parallel set of tools from warehouses to BI layers and everything in between. So you can see there's thousands of those, as I imagine you're familiar with in your data state, so many different assets, very complex, a lot going on. To simplify right now for our navigation and our AI demo, I'm going to hop up to our purpose feature. And this is an existing feature in Atlin where basically you can control what colleagues in your organization might have access to in Atlin, depending on what they're going to need to see. And so I'm going to limit this down to just a small subset of assets to make it really easy for us to navigate across the interface here. We see what AI can do for us, starting with context. So as we continue to get used to this page, you can see what are these tabs here? These are different asset profiles. And that's what Varun touched on in terms of his Analyst Anonymous, what people want to be able to see initially, and it's the core of any data catalog. So when I click on each, you'll see over on the right side, we'll get more and more metadata about each of these, whatever they may be, lineage, tags, terms, all the information you might want to know about your data estate. So let me jump into one of these, and we'll start getting into what Atlin AI can do for you in terms of context. So I've opened up an asset here. This fact orders table in Snowflake. This is an asset profile, a 360 degree view showing key metadata and relationships across your stack. So let's look for some more context that an analyst, a data engineer, somebody in business operations might be looking for besides just the name of this table. Okay, we've got columns, we've got sample data. We're here looking for some textual description, nothing. I can go in and write it, but what about instead using this Atlin AI? Humans need context for the data. We can provide that for our colleagues, but who's thrilled to write a description? AI can create, and that lets me, the human, curate what it generates. So as it's doing this, I can let you know what's going on in the background. It's taking in the context of where this asset fits across my data state and generating the most relevant information and then sharing that with relevant LLMs so we can get a useful piece of information to come back to us for our description. Now, we all know LLMs, you know, these are evolving products, so it's been a little slow. So I'm just gonna try, give it, a, give it another go. Um, we are, as we'll talk about some of our partnerships earlier and before, connecting to uh, Microsoft's uh, Azure OpenAI service. That's really the partner here that we're pinging. So let's take a look. This is what has come up for me. It's telling me the context of my data, the database, the schema, core information about the columns, and some context for what would generally be in a fact orders table. So I can say apply if I decide that I trust this. And what I can do, I can also hop in and say, hey, what's going on with the activity here? And you can see that this has been logged, the change that I made. And it's not just logged saying Peter Swigert changed this, it's logged saying updated using Atlin AI. And that goes back to our AI principles, always about transparency and trust. So maybe that felt a little generic to you, a description of a fact table. Let's get into a few more details. So we can go into our column preview. You can see there's a few dozen columns here. What can AI do to give me more context to these columns? We hear all the time from organizations. I have tens of thousands of things in my data lake, hundreds of thousands, millions of tables. I have absolutely no way of documenting column names into business names, clear descriptions for my end users, and then maintaining them to be accurate. Well, that's the exact kind of thing where generative AI can come in and help us out. So I have a couple options here. I can flip these column names to business names if they seem too technical, or I can explore what these descriptions might look like. So again, the AI is taking into context what these column names are in their terminology, but also where they sit in your data state, the relationships they have the metadata you've layered on top. If maybe you say, hey, I'm tagging this as PII, or I'm giving this verified or drafts as, that kind of information is what's going to be in the background all throughout during 
uh, the metadata that we're putting in to the relevant prompts. So you can see, well, this is all right, but I always want to have a human in the loop. So it's not just auto applying. I can jump right in directly and edit this however I see fit. And I can easily say, hey, actually, I just want to apply these two. The other ones, I might come back later and try again. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and hit apply. You can see the descriptions have been applied. And again, if I go into my activity logs, it's going to show that these specific column names were updated by me using Atlin AI. So maybe you say, this is delightful, but do I really want to spend all my time in Atlin itself? I work in a lot of different tools. Everybody's working in so many tools these days. Well, this kind of information you might get a notification about via something that we have at Atlin. Lots of extensibility. So we have webhooks enabled. And before setting up this demo, I enabled webhooks to send anytime uh, any of these pieces of metadata that I own were updated, send me a Slack notification. So I'll hop over here into Slack and you can say, hey, I updated the description of this table and of these columns. And that's just there. This is exactly what time it is right now. This just happened. So with the webhooks, this isn't directly dependent on AI. You can enable this for any use case you want in Atlin, but shows we're always working to put the platform and the AI aspect of it where you want to be, not just trapped in a single interface. So as we come back into Atlin, let's jump over into a different kind of asset. So this is a glossary term. So you can see different kind of categories here for glossaries. Basically, this is a way to bring the semantic layer into your data set. So you can tie all kinds of different data from reports and analytics to tables and views to your orchestration layer into these glossaries. Well, whoever set this up for claim approval rate of my company didn't actually spend much time giving me any documentation. I mean, there's not even a readme, but who wants to write a readme? I certainly don't. So this is certainly a time where AI can really add a lot of value taking some of this labor-intensive work out of what we need to do. So let me go ahead and say add and jump into glossary term readme. And I'll say, hey, so this is a template. And so these are templates that you can customize yourself. I've gone in and said, I want to have a summary, critical inputs, relevant business processes. But you can set up a template for a glossary term or any other readme any way you want. And so these will be the categories that combine with the metadata of your data stack are going to get passed to generate a very useful, relevant response. So I'm going to say, sure, use Atlin AI. And we can see it was writing in real time. It was filling out according to the template that we had set. It's giving me good insight into what claim approval rate actually means. So this is a measurement of the percentage of insurance claims that are approved by an insurance company. And again, this is not hard coded anywhere. This is packet passing directly into AI. Tell me what the inputs are and then contextualizing this with relevant business processes. So I'm getting the context and AI is generating the relevant information that I need. And then as the human, it's transparent, I'm in the loop. So. This is all fine and great, you might say, but you're still taking the actions. Thought AI was supposed to be making my life easier at scale. So far, it's just been Pete individually clicking, write this text for me. What can make this scale even more? So we have a number of different options for you. So Alan has a smooth Google Sheets integration. So there's an extension in Google Sheets and say you'd like to change a bunch of information that's not automatically coming in from Snowflake or Looker or Power BI or any of the myriad different uh, items in your data extension that you might have, you can do so via Google Sheets. But Atlin AI is also now there in Google Sheets with you. It's always accessible coming into the tools that you're working in. So say I wanted to update column descriptions just like I did in the UI. Now I can do so in Google Sheets. So this is operating on the same principles as if I was in the Atlin interface itself. 
and it's just poured it over here, extensible into the tool that I want to be in right now, which is Google Sheets. So at Atlin, we understand you don't want to be in a new tool. Your data stack is complicated enough as it is. You want Atlin to work wherever you are. So here, I'm using the benefits of Atlin AI and generative text within my Google Sheet. And if I closed out with the extension, the rest of the workflow, this would port directly into uh, all the Atlin assets that I have and display in the interface there. Well, Pete, you say, that's nice, but it's a flat file, spreadsheets. Is that really going to scale to the modern data needs? Sure, absolutely. If you want to go full bore in this, we are 100% in with you. So let's jump it back into the Atlin, Atlin interface. You can see this is our marketplace. This is where we have easy connections to all kinds of different applications, systems, tools, all across the modern data stack. You can set these up in our UI in just a few seconds. Well, what does it have to do with AI? Well, say I want to connect to Snowflake. I'd set this up and connect, put in my credentials, things like that. We have a new fourth step that we're pushing out. So I've gone through all my credentials and I say, I would like to auto enrich using AI. So here what you see you can do is bring in any of the specific, and again, entirely under your control, options for enriching your metadata via AI at the time of workflow. So if your team builds 600 new Snowflake tables, the instant those come into Atlin, AI will generate the exact metadata information that provides more context to you. This scales all the way as much as you want to go, and we're pushing this out to all kinds of connectors in the future. So one more thing here. We've seen many examples so far of how to use AI to apply context to your data stack. So far, we've only been generating metadata. What can we do to actually generate data? So PII is a great consideration here, and I'm sure it's been a pain point or headache for many of us. So to Varun's point earlier about how so many analysts want to see 10 sample rows the instant they see some data, what about when that's just not possible? Here you can see I'm connected to a Microsoft SQL Server table, but the admin on this account has said, no, Pete, you can't see that sample data. But what if I need to do some modeling on it? I'm building a machine learning model or doing some business analytics. I don't need this customer data itself. I understand this is credit card numbers, social security numbers, but I need data like that to be able to build the kind of analysis. I don't want to have to go and say, let me track down the three engineers who built this, the two governance people who handle these permissions and get approval from their director all before I can gin up an analysis that's just going to do aggregate on this in general. Well, thanks to Atlin AI, in just a few seconds, you can get generative data that's going to match whatever relevant profile you're going to have for the actual data. So in one click, it's spinning up fake customer names, credit card numbers, billing IDs, and social security numbers. All taking into context all the metadata that we have from all the different connections that this has across your data estate. So we've really come full circle from AI telling us about our data to AI creating the data for us. And again, you can download this data, throw it in your Jupyter notebook, into Excel if you're that kind of person. Everything here travels with you wherever you want to go. Let's hop back in the slides for a sec and recap what we saw over the past few minutes. We looked at assets and bulk column descriptions to give more context to your data. Looked at readmes using templates so you control exactly what kind of information you want to pass, what kind of information you want to have generated. Looked at scaling up, having AI give you more context via Google Sheets or via a zero touch workflow where you're in control of exactly what you want to use AI for, but it's scale. And finally, we looked at generating sample data, synthetic data so that you don't have to track down all the permissions when you just want to have data like that to achieve your outcome.